The current state of large language models is really interesting. Never before have we had a single week where we've gotten multiple models like DeepSeek Coder V2 and a few others that basically match the performance or surpass the performance of closed source AI and also get some really interesting updates in closed source AI as well. I think one of the better ways to look at this, at least in terms of where we are now, is OpenAI is basically NVIDIA and Anthropic AI is basically AMD. There are areas where they do things better, but they're always sort of playing catch up and they never really maybe get the attention that they deserve. And although I think NVIDIA still deserves all the GPU attention they get, Anthropic takes a very different approach to closed source AI and I don't think they get enough credit for it. They do a ton of really interesting research and today they were able to culminate that research into the next version of cloud. So I wanna get into what this new cloud model can do why it's maybe better than GPT-4.0 and a few other future releases that OpenAI has been maybe hinting at. And basically what this means for the future of closed source AI versus open source AI, since on this channel I really mostly cover open models that anyone can mess with. And yeah, so welcome to AI Flux, let's get into it. So after messing around with this model, I have to say I'm probably actually going to cancel my GPT-4 subscription. I still use it for a few things. I mentioned that in the Deep Sea Coder video, which you should definitely watch as well. I've been switching between Cloud3 Opus and frankly, Cloud3 Opus, at least in what I do as an engineer and for the other things that I use LLMs for, on a single shot basis does significantly better. I don't think I'm alone in saying that when I use GPT-4, a lot of times I end up in sort of this purgatory of telling it to keep trying again or prompting in a way that's pretty much just trying to get it to focus enough to get what I want. And cloud generally, if it misses, is just giving me too much or it's maybe just not focused enough in how much of a correct answer I want, which is kind of interesting. So cloud made a very interesting release today. They're not calling it cloud four, but they're just calling it cloud 3.5 Sonnet. Now, one thing that I think is important to remember here is that Anthropic has sort of this family of models. They don't really just increment them by a number. So there's Haiku, which is the lightest and fastest, and is interesting because it actually is a really interesting foil to Microsoft's Phi 3 in a lot of really small performance models. There's Sonnet, which is generally available for everyone. And we're actually going to test this in just a bit. And then there's Opus, which is their most powerful. It has the largest context window, and it's really what I've used the most for my own work. And what they updated today was the latest version of Sonnet. So we actually have to wait and see what Cloud 3.5 Opus actually looks like. And based on using this model, I'm pretty encouraged as to what that performance will look like. So along with Harper, full disclosure, I was able to try this out early. I have a few friends who work at Anthropic and I was totally blown away. Obviously I couldn't talk about it until today, but frankly, it made ChatGPT feel like kind of an older research project or something that if I was going to use again, it would just be annoying because it, it wasn't consistent enough. One thing that I also noticed it was quite good at, aside from coding and just everything that I use these models for, was raw text cleanup. So basically if you feed it in like a really messy uh, transcription of something and then saying, hey, like pair this down in these specific areas and then turn it into a script, it was pretty cool. Now, obviously I don't endorse actually doing that. Like don't just take my video, transcribe it, and put it in the Cloud3 Sonnet and upload a new version because you shouldn't copy people's stuff. But I thought it was pretty cool. The other thing is I never really use cloud for its multimodal capability, but now it's actually really good with that. And I actually like their interface a lot more when it comes to uploading something and then kind of interacting back and forth. Um, ChatGPT is really open-ended in that regard. And I think a lot of times it's hard to actually, again, get it to focus. So this is what Anthropic told us directly about the release. So they said, we're introducing Cloud 3.5 Sonnet, our most intelligent model yet. And what's interesting is they didn't mention that Opus is probably definitely more intelligent than this. We're just not there yet. So they say this is the first release in our 3.5 model family. So they're slowly building this up. And they say Sonnet now outperforms competitor models on key evaluations at twice the speed of Cloud3 Opus and one fifth the cost. And one thing that was kind of a drawback for Anthropic when they initially released Cloud3, even though the model was incredible, was how expensive it was. And what's also cool is that in theory, this is approaching the speed of Cloud3 Haiku, which is pretty interesting. And if Meta has been honest about the early snapshot benchmarks of Llama 400B, Cloud 3.5 Sonnet has already surpassed it. Now, obviously this last update was from about a month ago from Meta, so we have to kind of see how accurate that is. But the benchmarks are pretty interesting. So there are a few areas where obviously GPT-4.0 is still winning. Um, most of those are in MMLU and in math and problem solving. 
But in everything else, ironically, uh, undergraduate level knowledge in MMLU and uh, GPQA Diamond, which for me is one of my preferred kind of things to look at, at least if I'm just doing a surface level evaluation, the performance is pretty impressive. And it's actually even far better than Llama 3 400B in a number of areas and basically beating GPT-40 across the board. And another thing that I think is interesting is they're launching a preview of what they're calling artifacts. So this is basically a way you can ask Cloud to generate documents, code, or kind of diagrams based off of prompts. So as opposed, so it's kind of a really interesting new take on generative AI that is highly tied to context that you define and kind of chat with in a large language model, which I think is really cool. A lot of other tools meant for generative AI are just kind of meant for doing things that are all over the place or things that are just images or just videos and not things that are really hard to actually ground in context with an LLM unless you build your own tooling. And it's pretty cool to see that too. Also, as I was mentioning, this is a really powerful vision model. And I know a lot of people who use cloud professionally with its API just as a vision model. Obviously, GPT-4 is, is quite good as well, but I do still think cloud is more concise and if you're doing things like technical analysis or looking at diagrams, in my opinion, if you're trying to replace your data scientists and convince them they should go study something else, this is a great tool to do that. And I do like that Anthropic takes a bit more of a research first approach to AI safety. So obviously OpenAI probably, in my opinion, overdoes it. And what I like with Anthropic is when they make decisions on where they limit their models or when they decide how to sort of encapsulate them, they generally always back it up with research. And by that, I mean technical research, kind of not like board driven, politically charged philosophical research. And I think that's pretty cool. And if you wanna learn more about that, um, keep an eye out for my video on what Ilya Sutskever is now working on with his new kind of alignment AI company, but that's going to be in another video. So let's hop into cloud and see what we actually get. So this is the interface you get. And right now I'll link below, but anyone can try out cloud 3.5 Sonnet. So I'm not sure how this will actually compare to some other models you guys have used, but let's check this out. So first I'm just going to use the LLM itself and do some basic kind of logical reasoning. So I'm going to use kind of the marble question and then combine that with a question that I use where I talk about a glass and a fruit. So the question I've asked is I have two mugs, one with the marble, one with the peach. I pour the marble into the other glass. What does the other glass contain now that the marble has been moved? So this is basically asking it to understand that now I've moved the marble, so there should be one mug that has nothing in it and one mug that has a marble and a peach in it. And an integral part of this challenge is that yes, the mugs could be made of glass and the marble is likely obviously made of glass. So let's see if Cloud does well with this. All right, so it's thinking. Well, wow. all right, so that was, really, really quick, and it nailed it on the first shot. So this is pretty cool. It says, yeah, after pouring the marble into the other glass, the glass now contains a peach and a marble. This is assuming that pouring the marble means transferring it into the glass that originally contained only the peach. So wow, that entirely nailed that question. So now I wanna ask something a bit more difficult. Not a coding question just yet, but kind of another brain teaser. So this question I like because it makes the model be aware of the environment and it's still kind of a technical practical problem that is something that an instruct model would answer well. So the question is, if I have a bucket of water and three towels on a hot day, what's the fastest way to use the towels to remove all of the water from the bucket? So there is one question of, can you dry them in the sun? Can you just use a capillary action? And let's see what it gives us. The important thing here is there isn't exactly one exact answer like the last question we asked. So there's the dip and ring method. Uh, I've never heard it Describe the way, but that's that's correct. So you just repeat that process. Um, what's cool is it got that you can utilize the hot weather. So when I describe kind of the setting, it used that to its advantage to do something that I wanted it to do. Uh, so it says, yeah, spread the wet towels in direct sunlight or a windy area to wick the water away. While the towels are drying, use the third to continue the dip and ring process. So that's kind of cool. This is basically a, a double win here because we got a multi-step inference on the first shot, which is pretty cool. Uh, it also tells us to maximize the surface area and then be very thorough because it makes it really wants to make sure we have no more water in there. Um, so that's pretty cool. So that was actually really, really impressive. Now I'm going to try some basic coding questions. So I'm going to ask it, so a bit more of an open-ended question. The idea here is it needs to understand that it needs to under, like that it needs to find the location of my car and the relative angle and direction of the windshield. And what's cool is it totally understands here that it needs a latitude and a longitude, totally unprompted. 
It needs to understand the time of day. And I totally got that. And then true solar time is what it's using to understand kind of the azimuth and direction of the sun. And wow, so that actually entirely got it. And it gave me a, a single test case with New York. And all right, cool. So it, yeah, it got our, our zenith and azimuth angles. It understands that we can probably use GPS to tell it where we're parking. Um, now, just as an extra challenge, I'm going to say uh, factor in air temperature and the current weather. So it's probably just going to use some kind of API to find the weather. Uh, yeah, it's just stubbed that, which is kind of cool. This is one thing I like as well, where it's not doing something like GPT-4 does, where it, it just goes and finds like any example of using a weather library. It actually has just stubbed a weather API. And obviously one thing it can't do here is understand if we're shaded by a building or another object. But I think this is kind of cool, where at least it can tell us like, yeah, you can go park in the sun or maybe park in a covered area uh, or that kind of thing. So I'm actually pretty impressed with this. Uh, again, if you guys want to see specific benchmarks, please either email me directly or leave them in the comments below. I do want to hear your feedback. So now what I want to try is this new, um, what Anthropic is calling artifacts. So I'll toggle artifacts on here. You don't have to toggle it. And now I'm going to actually give it some advice. So in theory, this is kind of like turning on the multimodal aspect. So what I want to say here is um, write a Rust program that will generate a cool shape that looks like 2D Minecraft. So I picked kind of a test case that wouldn't have the most examples of this. And I will say, I really, really like this kind of interface. What I like about it is it's kind of like an interactive person walking you through how the LLM is actually thinking. And this is wildly better than kind of the live output you get from ChatGPT or GPT-4.0, which seems just kind of two-dimensional at this point, even with the TTS and like the voice. Frankly, this is so much better than the voice because we're just getting so much more information. We have, you know, basically what's going on and how it's relatively thinking on the left. And then we have kind of a visual expectation or a visual output of what it's actually giving us. And it changes as it's thinking. So what's cool is, for instance, here I asked it to show the shape it's making first. And this is kind of the Minecraft style 2D shape, which whether or not you think that's Minecraft style, it's close enough. And then in Rust, it shows us the Rust code it generated to actually get there. And I just like the way that it linearly kind of presents all this information and then also intermixes the multimodal capability in a way that's just really nice to consume as someone that uses these tools a lot. And it, this is by far the best interface we've seen yet. And I can't wait for someone to try to make some kind of open source version of this. Um, and obviously that's gonna be pretty hard because most of the open LLMs are singularly just visual or just LLMs. Uh, but maybe in the future, we'll see a Moondream 3 interface that will look something like this. And now just to see if this can be kind of Dali-esque, but in more of a boardroom kind of business way, um, I'm going to say uh, chart the price of NVIDIA in a graph that looks like it was made in the Fallout 3 universe. So we'll see if we can get this. So it's getting some live data. It's having to do something that's actually kind of uh, themed. And it's also going to show us the code that it's using to do this. And I think this is, it's writing TypeScript. No, that's pretty cool. Actually, this is pretty cool. Uh, so it just showed us the TypeScript that it used to write this. That's, that's awesome. That, that's pretty, so it showed us how you would be viewing the NVIDIA stock price in your Pip-Boy. Now, obviously, if this was actually in Fallout, um, you know, NVIDIA probably wouldn't exist. And the reason for the, uh, the, enti the entire apocalypse happening could have been AGI. But this is really cool. I, you know, I was not expecting this interface thing to be awesome. And like the, the thing I liked most about Cloud, because I use Cloud a lot. Um, yeah, sure, it's great. But this is, this is awesome. Like, I, I am being entirely serious in that I am canceling my GPT-4 subscription now. So I'm curious what you guys think. Um, do you want to see me do more cloud stuff or maybe some different things with closed source LLMs just because they're a little bit different than open source ones? And hopefully the open source ones will catch up here as quickly as possible, and I'm sure they will. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think about cloud, um, which models you prefer to use. If you have models you like that are open that aren't cloud that you, you know, use day to day, um, let me know in the comments below. As always, I hope you learned something. And if you like our content, please like, subscribe, and share. And we'll see you in the next one.